hello viewers. I'm speaking to you this evening from the BBC Research Department. And with me now is the Chief Researcher, Mr. Frederick Scuttle. Good evening, sir. Hello, Mr. Scuttle. Good evening, viewers. Now, Mr. Scuttle, we've heard a great deal about audience measurement. Yes. Would you like to estimate exactly how many people you think are watching this show now? We estimate, sir, 59 million, sir. Yeah, but the entire population's only 50 million. Some watch more than others. Oh, I know. <laughs> But of course, you only investigate a small percentage of these, don't you? Yeah, but even so, sir, we, we have a very high degree of authenticity, sir. I see. Well, of course, you must it's... use highly skilled investigators for the job. Oh, indeed, yes, they have to go out to meet people, you know, they have to be able to talk to people man to man in their own language, you understand, sir. I yes. see, they're expected to interview them in the vernacular. <laughs> if that is where they are, sir, that is where they will interview them, sir. <laughs> Shelf, get through, <laughs> now, Mr. Scuttle, I yes, notice behind us this yes. very impressive looking graph. What exactly does it show? I will demonstrate. Hang on. You see this, sir, demonstrates, you see, the number of shows the BBC put out last year, sir. I see it. Yes, sir. Uh, what, uh, what accounts for this very steep rise in June, Mr. Scuttle? Ah, oh, yes. Well, that is my secretary, sir, you see, Miss Goosehead. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see, she was making up the graph, you see, along here, you see. <laughs> well, leaning forward, I'm walking slowly backwards, you see. <laughs> when I happen to be stood about... <laughs> about there, sir, you see. And I accidentally and inadvertently who uh, bumped into us, sir, <laughs> causing the sharp rise in the room of Yes. Well, now, Mr. Scuttle, you're responsible for the entire BBC television output, yes, aren't you? Yes, Not yes. just light entertainment. No, the whole lot, sir. You see, over here, sir, pop of the top, yes. you see, I advise on that side by people like Julie Rogers, Roy Orbison. Jean Pitney. Her as well, sir. <laughs> I know them on the play, sir. Only last week I was passing Studio 3, sir. There's a girl coming through the French windows on the, in the studio there, sir. She had the jodhpurs on, sir. The riding hat and the riding crop sprouted with mud. She says, Mummy, Daddy, I have come from the meat. I had to tell her, sir, I have come for the meat. <laughs> Fresh out of radar, sir. She didn't know. <laughs> then this other fella comes on, sir. He says, I'm the Buddha surveyor. I'm going to set my theodolite. I had to stop him, sir. No naked flames are allowed in the studio, you see. <laughs> you have to tell him, you know. <laughs> Mr. Scuttle, who is responsible for putting the shows out? Hugh and I. <laughs> That's a good name for a show, that, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, I must, I must remember that. No, sir. So Hugh, Carlton, Green and I, so we'd like to do the one show, you see, and if we think it's a good one, and we run it into a series, you see. And if you, if you don't think it's good? Oh, well then, sir, we, we, we don't show it, you see. Sir. Oh, I see, you scrap it. No, we don't scrap it, sir. We save it to show would-be producers, you see, how not to put a show together, you see. <laughs> I must say, I'd rather enjoy seeing some of those shows that never made it. Would you, sir? I'll get young Tom Sloan to show one or two for but you, now? Sir. Yes, he's on the thing. Yeah, come and sit down there, sir. Yeah? Yeah, won't be a second. I'll get him to... They're right on the thing. I'll just switch on. I'll get it done right through. Well, thank you, Mr. Scott. I expect you're as fascinated as I am. I'm sure you're, you're as interested as I am to see some of these shows that never actually reached your screens. Yes, I think they're ready now, so let's just sit back and enjoy them, shall we? We are starting our series tonight with songs from around the world with the international globe-trotting folk singer with the true ethnic sound, Ivor Burles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start off this evening with a very wonderful African song. Now, you probably know it as Marion Makeba's famous click song. And a lot of the African people say that a non-African cannot sing Marion Makeba's clip song as it is terribly difficult to pronounce. But after years of study, I managed to acquire the manner in which it is done. Here it is then, Marion Makeba's famous clip song. Hello. In the television studio 
in Heidelberg is Baron von Seidel, member of one of the oldest aristocratic families in Europe. Now, as his command of English is somewhat limited, or so he tells us, the Baron has asked that the questions be numbered, and he has his answers prepared, I believe, and also numbered. Yes, so I think now that we could fire away with the first question. <clears throat> Hello, Baron. How are you? Ach, ach, no. Wie lange? Ah, so, so. Oh, how, how are you, Baron? <laughs> number one, number one. Uh, there seems to be something um, a little bit wrong. I, I think we'll just carry on with question number two. Yeah, that number um, one. Is it true that, that you're coming to England soon? I am very well, thank you. <laughs> um, yes, is it true that this time you will be marrying your fiancé, Lady Selma? Y yes, and I hope to see much more this time. <laughs> than I was able to see on my last visit. <laughs> there are several interesting and out-of-the-way places I would like to visit. <laughs> I, I would have visited them on my last trip, but I was not given the opportunity. Uh, uh, Baron, where, where are you going to spend your honeymoon? Yes, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, now... Now, Baron, um, uh, changing the subject, I, I believe that you have the only herd of Macedonian camels in captivity. Tell me, uh, uh, where do you keep them? In a small hotel in Eastbourne. <laughs> um, the ozone there is beautiful. You know, you get the smell of the sea and all sorts of nice smells there. Yes. 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 Um, well, is there anything that you would like to find in England uh, that you didn't find uh, the last time you were here? 140,000 square miles of desert, you see. <laughs> that is where my camels are home freely, you see. Um, uh, is there anyone that you would like to talk to on your next trip? Yes, Albert Hall. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been there. <laughs> uh, uh, I believe... Uh, that by your first marriage, Baron, you have got two children. Yes, they are Sir Alec Douglas Hume and Mr. Harold Wilson. <laughs> uh, will you be bringing them with you? Unfortunately, the eldest one has got the whooping cough. <laughs> and the little fat round one has got a nappy rash. <laughs> Good night, Baron. I won't be bringing them with me. I don't know what he's me. talking about. Thank you. Good night. Bye, yes. Lord. Um, is it my turn? Yes. Come on. Stop it. Britain's poetry tonight comes from Dalton Abbott and introduces for the first time on television one of the West Country's most prolific poets, Ted Tinker. Tonight he brings a poem with a story. The story of an old man who finds it's never too late for a dream to become reality. Here then with the old fiddler is Ted Tingle. <laughs> it was market day in the village and the crowd round the stores was quite dense. But what caught my eye was a stall piled eye with a musical instrument. And up the store come a little old man, his toe clothes was all tattered and thin. But his face come a light as his eyeballs caught sight of a beautiful old violin. He held it up to the dealer, saying, how much is this one then? He replied, it's a study various, my man. That'll cost you four pound ten. <laughs> I can't afford that, said the little old man, and a lump came into my throat. I was feeling quite chuffed, and so I stuffed in his hand a ten shilling note. <laughs> a crowd had gathered behind us, so I quickly went round with his hat. When we'd finished, I'd found I collected five pounds, so I took my ten shilling back. <laughs> well, we give the dealer the money, and the old man, so shabbily dressed, picked up the violin, stuck it under his chin, and he played like a man possessed. <laughs> he played fugues and cantatas, and orator, orator, toritos too. By composers like Johann Sebastian Bach, to mention only a few. <laughs> he played waltzes by Strauss and Dee Floydemore, and Tales from the Vienna Wood. Then Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto. But he didn't play that quite so good. <laughs> well,
well done, cried the crowd when he finished, and they gently patted his head. But the excitement was too much for the little old man, who unfortunately dropped down dead. <laughs> well, we give the dealer the fiddle, and took back our four pound ten. Then we picked up the old man, and we laid him to rest in a cemetery down by the glen. But sometimes at night, when the moon do shine bright, if I should wander that way up over the hill, it seems that still I can hear the old man play. Yes, the words of that popular song ring true. For though the old man is gone, yes, though the song has ended, the melody lingers on. Oh. Good evening. Tonight we present for the first time on BBC TV, Continental Cabaret. We hope during the series to bring you some of the finest performers from the European cabaret scene. Our first guests in this program offer you a Tyrolean tippish dance. So here now, complete with lederhosen, are that popular Austrian couple Fritz and Chip. <laughs> 